Do you consider yourself a person with decent Arduino programming skills? If you do, I have a challenge for you. I'm going to show you a piece of code and you are trying to guess what that code does. Here it is. Any clue? Are you going to be surprised if I tell you that this is a classic Blink sketch? If that comes as a surprise for you, stick around. So is this code really a Blink sketch? The equivalent of the Blink standard program you probably know all too well. We have the LED connected to digital pin 4 and ground and in the code in one second intervals we send high and then low signals and that causes the LED to blink. Both codes look similar, same if statement, but what are the DDRD and port D objects? What are those binary values we are assigning to them? DDRD is the data direction register. It holds the information whether each pin within D register is declared as output or input. One represents output and zero represents input. What exactly is this D register? There are seven pins assigned to the D register, from digital pin zero to digital pin seven. Each pin has its own ID within the register. Here those IDs nicely correspond to the pin numbers. So digital pin 2 is PD2, digital pin 3 is PD3 and so on. That is not always the case with other registers. So the binary value we assign to data direction register sets digital pin 4 as output and all other pins within that register to input. Now that we indicated which pin is configured as output, we can control what signal we would send to that pin with the port D register. One sends high signal and zero sends low signal. In our code we send one and zero in one second intervals and the LED blinks. Then we also have PIND register. It is used when working with input pins. There are no input pins configured in this code. We will look at that register later. Okay, so for D register we have DDRD, port D and PIND registers. Now we have B register, which groups pins D8 through D13, with IDs from PB0 through PB5. Just like for register D, we have here DDRB, port B and PINB. And finally we have C register, and it comprises of analog pins A0 through A5, with IDs PC0 to PC5. Here we have DDRC, port C and PINC register. Let's connect the LilyPad LED to the Arduino Nano, load the code and double check if this code will blink the LED. It does. Now let's add input pin to our little project. In my last video about pull-up and pull-down resistors, I had a similar setup, so I will use it here. The push button will be connected to digital pin 7 on one side and to the ground on the other. We do not have to use external pull-up resistor as we would activate the internal pull-up resistor on digital pin D7 with the use of pin mode command with the input pull-up attribute. So now when the button is pressed, low signal is read at digital pin 7 and when low signal is detected we send high signal to digital pin D4 and that turns the LED on. When the button is released, there is high signal at the digital pin 7 which results in low signal at the digital pin 4 and that turns LED off. I will try to rewrite this code so that it uses pin registers. First we have pin mode commands to set input pin of the button and output pin of the LED. We can now do it with a single line of code. In the binary value sent to the direction register, you can see that bit corresponding to digital pin 4 is set to 1, configuring this pin as output, and bit associated with digital pin 7 is set to 0, and that means it will be configured as input. Next in loop we have if statement that checks if value read at the digital pin 7 is low. How can we do that here? 
In one of the previous slides I mentioned PIND register that holds current values read at the pins belonging to the D register. Here it is. But how can we check, extract from it the bit that we want? In our case we are interested only in the value of bit 7. To do it we create the mask in which we put 1 in a position we are interested in and 0 in all the others. Then we can use the logic operator AND to filter that bit we are interested in out. Since in all other positions in the mask we have 0 value, that means with the AND operator 0 would be propagated in those positions. If 7th bit of PIND is 1, the value 1 would be propagated, otherwise we will also have 0 in that position. So if you want to get rid of all the zeros, we shift the bits 7 positions to the left. We can use ID PIND7, which is equal to 7. So this is what we are going to use in the IF statement. If we detect 0, that indicates the button is pressed and the LED turns on, and if 1 is detected, the button is released and the LED is off. Let's add the push button to our prototype, load the code and see if it works. It does not. It seems we have a floating pin situation. The reason for this is the fact that the internal pull-up resistor for digital pin D7 was not yet activated. This can be done with port D register. But that register was meant to send high-low signals to the output pins. Yes, but if the pin is configured as input, by placing one in the corresponding bit, we are activating the pull-up resistor associated with that pin. Let's give it a try. I am adjusting the code, reloading it, and does it look better? No, still does not work. This time the two lines of code that send the binary value to port D register to turn the LED on and off override the 1 in the 7th bit of that register. This is the bit activating pull-up resistor. So this is why we still experience floating pin situation. That bit needs to be set in those two lines of code as well. Let's see if that makes any difference. It works now. We can control LED with the push button. But this shows that there are pitfalls when working with pin registers. You can accidentally override the bits in those registers that have been set for other reasons. This would be clearly visible in this example when we introduce one more LED and configure it to be on in a setup function. In setup we delay the code for 5 seconds. Let's test it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the LED turns off. Again, the two lines of code setting the port D register value reset the state of that LED, and that was not our intention. There is a way of adjusting just the bits that we want, rather than sending binary values that sets all the bits within the register. I will demonstrate it using the line from our code. In this example, we wanted to set a bit corresponding to digital pin 7 to 0, to configure that pin as input, and we also wanted to set the bit corresponding to digital pin 4 to 1 to configure that pin as output. Let's look at the setting of the selected bit to 1 first. We have a DDRD register. We are not aware of the current bit values in that register. We want to set the fifth bit to 1. To do this, we need a mask in which all bits are set to 0 apart from the fifth bit that is set to 1. Then we use logic operator OR and this sets the 5th bit to 1 and all the other bits remain unchanged. Here are three ways to perform this action within Arduino code. In the first one, you see logic OR operator in between DDRD register value and our mask binary value. The second is just the same thing with slightly different notation. The third one is more complex. Can you decipher how does it work? In this line of code we build the mask using the position number of the bit we want to set. In our case we use a DDD4 
where DDD4 points to the fifth bit and returns number 5. So we take the binary representation of digit 1 and shift the bits 5 positions to the left. This way we have our mask which we merge with DDRD register using OR operator. I think the last option is the best. This line of code nicely shows what our intentions were. Changing fifth position of DDRD register to 1. Now let's look at the way in which you can set a selected bit to 0. We create a similar mask setting the bit you are interested in to 1. Then we invert that mask so we end up with 1s in all positions apart from the one we want to set, which will be 0. And here we use end logic operator. We set the bit we are interested in to 0 with all other bits unchanged. Here also we have three possible notations for that actions in Arduino code. So let's rewrite the code of the sketch in this way that we are changing only the bits relevant to our project. Quick test. It works. Are you wondering why do we even need to consider using pin registers? This code is more difficult to read and it's not even much shorter. Till now I used the pin register in sketches that interact with two pins. The benefits are visible more clearly when you work with multiple pins. Let me show you a perfect example. In one of my videos I was showing how to control 7 segment display with 7 pins of Arduino. The objective is to show all digits in 1 second interval starting with 0 and finishing with 9. I will use that circuit but reconnect the segments of the display to the D register pins. D0 would be segment A, D1 segment B and so on. So let's look at the code. First we have a table definition that has 8-bit combinations with the uh, most significant bit obsolete. That corresponds to 7 segment combinations for each digit. In setup function we configure all 7 pins as output. Then we have to write the custom function display digit which has a digit as an input parameter and based on which digit we pass to it we find the corresponding sequence of bits in the digits table. And in loop function we have a for loop which executes the display digit function for digits 0 to 9, waiting 1 seconds in between each execution. So let's apply what we learned in this video and try to optimize this code. The first improvement will have nothing to do with using pin registers. We'll just optimize the table that stores the segment combination. Now each combination would be 8-bit binary number. The major improvement can be seen in setup function. We scale down to just one line of code which sets all bits of the D register to output. Because of the way we optimize the table and the fact that we can set the values of all segments in one line of code, we no longer need the custom function. In loop function, we replace execution of the custom function with a line of code that finds the right bit sequence for the digit we want to display, sending it to port D register. How is this for a code optimization? You have to admit that this is a major improvement. But is it any good? Let's check if we can display digits 0 to 9 this way. It works. Optimizing the code is only one reason you would use pin registers. The other is that port manipulation done this way is also much much faster. When we use pin mode, digital read and digital write commands, the code needs to be translated to low-level code and that takes time. Imagine the code when you send high signal to the pin and then immediately set it back low. You can capture this on an oscilloscope. For the code using pin mode command it will look like this. For the code using pin registers it will most probably look like that. Well, the first diagram looks nicer, right? But there is a specific reason it looks better. The signal spike in the first code lasts for around 5 microseconds and is roughly 50 times longer than a spike in the second code which lasts around only 60 nanoseconds. That is a massive difference which explains why in certain projects pin register is a way to go. Enough about pin registers, this video is already too long. I am off for winter holidays and I will see you when I get back. In the meantime, if you like this video or any 
other video on my channel, like, share and subscribe. And maybe consider becoming my patron. I will see you next time.